You're listening to Bottlecast, the official podcast of Bottle Caps. So, welcome guys again to uh, Bottle Caps, episode six. I have here with me Corey, our uh, newly uh, chief operations officer, and uh, Scott McDonald, uh, our director of client services, and of course myself, Lupe. Uh, the multimedia director here. So we're just hopping in and, and talking about uh, where we picked up uh, as far as 2021, uh, how how it went, and then uh, what we're looking into for 2022, uh, what sort of trends we're seeing, uh, what we're excited about, what do we have up our sleeves, and then uh, just what, just what uh, 2021 has taught us. So uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of dive into uh, 2021. Uh, Corey, can you give us just kind of a, a one or two liner about uh, what, what 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 most stuck out for 2021? Yeah, I mean, 2021 for bottle caps was another banner year. Uh, we've had three consecutive years of growth, uh, exponential growth, really, in all areas and all phases of the business, from new accounts that we're adding onto the platform to new users who are downloading our apps and using our websites. Uh, to revenue uh, intake, you know, from programmatic campaigns and, and other sources as well. So overall, still trending in an upward direction. You know, one thing I would say industry-wide um, that occurred during 2021 that's maybe different from the past, uh, especially 2020, is I think we really started to get a grasp of what e-commerce is all about and, and where exactly it lies within the, um, you know, full uh, shopping model when it comes to beer, wine, and spirits. 2020 was obviously an up and down kind of roller coaster um, that, you know, determining any patterns or long-term uh, expectations made it very, very difficult. 2021, we saw flatten out in terms of a, a trend and a graph and then hold steady uh, for the remainder of the year. So very excited to build off of that. And I think you'll see industry-wide a lot of uh, brands and a lot of companies really leaning into what their learnings were for, for 2021. Yeah, actually, if I can ex expand on that just you know a little bit, um, it, we learned a, a, a lot in 2021, and and so did our our customers. You know, because 2020, if you'll remember, everything was shut down, and it was kind of a no brainer that customers would order online. But that was great. That that was that was really great for the stores it pushed them towards e-commerce and, and everything. And that was wonderful. Once everything starts to open up, however, it there's this uh, sort of the transition where stores, everyone's trending towards e-commerce, but now we're to the point where customers have lots of different options. They can go in store now if they really want to. And so now we are sort of transitioning to 2021, which is where the trend is still heavily leaning in towards e-commerce. But, uh, you know, stores have to still put in a little bit of effort to try to woo customers again. The, the days of just get a website, put it up, everyone's going to shop on your, you know, they don't have any, any other option. Th those days are kind of gone. And so stores are starting to uh, transition a little bit themselves, how to market to their customers a little bit better. Uh, the competition has definitely been raised. And so, uh, Certainly on that front, I think stores are also making a big transition after 2021 in sort of uh, realizing this new model for how to acquire customers and how to maintain customers in the totally different landscape than it was even in you know 2019. Yeah, and I think um, I, if for the folks listening, uh, if you caught wind of our year in review infographic that we sent out recently, I think uh, that was really neat to see, uh, you know, what products uh, topped uh, the charts on, on, on where and where they landed. Um, and uh, I was excited for the ready, ready to drink category because we all know that how that really took off last year, uh, really seeing which, which uh, you know, seltzers and such uh, kind of top the charts there. Uh, and then even as, even as far as uh, things like our top orders uh, in, a, in a single month, uh, December took the, the trophy there. Uh, do you guys want to talk on, on that? Yeah, I mean, from the brand side of things, uh, which is, you know, what, where, where I deal most of, of my time, um, you know, they know foot traffic is going to be heavy in the stores. So off-premise uh, marketing and, and any advertising initiatives really becomes important just because, uh, you know, 
shoppers are more accessible. So from an in-store uh, type of a, a shopping experience to their virtual or online shopping experience. Uh, folks are taking off for the holidays. Folks are having holiday parties. Uh, folks are having family coming into town. And, you know, celebration is a big part of what December is all about. Uh, and, I, and I think, obviously, Beer, Wine, and Spirits plays a major role in that. Um, and therefore, everyone's always geared up to finish the year on a, on a high note. Uh, in, in this industry. And I think, you know, the results uh, from an order perspective across our platform prove that out, you know, pretty obviously. Scott, what are the, uh, what are you hearing from the store level? Yeah. So that the October, November and December, you know, just like in traditional brick and mortar stores, the Black Friday was named because stores began to become profitable for the first time in the entire year. Well, th that, that happens starting in October. It really starts around Thanksgiving. And so, you know, like you mentioned, it's the most critical time of the year. So we build up, we anticipate it. We, we, we intentionally slow down on, you know, upgrades and, and, and things like that just to try to make our product run as smoothly as possible for what we always expect every year is a dramatic increase in, tra in traffic. And, you know, this year was no different especially the, the, between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. And, and so this year was extremely solid. Uh, and for the, from the store's perspective, you know, not only do orders in increase, they've gathered downloads, they've had customers that they've acquired throughout the year, and a lot of those customers begin to order. And, uh, and, and so that's great, okay? But also leading up to, you know, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, they'll see an, you know, an enormous increase in, in downloads that they maybe never had before. Downloads skyrocket, not just orders, but downloads. And so if you have a customer that's downloaded the app right before Christmas, say, and they, they wanted to order for a Christmas party, well, that, that's great too. But now you have stores that have a giant influx of, of new customers that they gained over the holidays. How do they take those same customers and turn them into repeat buyers over the course of the, the, the next few months, which is typically the slowest, right? And so uh, one of the things that we've seen and we're seeing it right now is a lot of the downloads that, that we got in, in, in December, that, that our stores got in December, they are sort of holding them afloat and, and keeping their revenue up uh, even into January. And so the stores that are more successful, that, that have success at converting downloads into orders can often take a really strong December and leverage that over the course of the next, until the next October, November, and December of the following year. That's awesome. So that's sort of the, the common trend that we see around this type of year, and especially with, with successful stores. Great. Um, and then I, I, just referencing our infographic here, uh, we have over 300 new stores added. Uh, Scott, can you kind of speak on that? Uh, was that maybe towards the tail end of the year, or, or is this something that uh, was, a, was a gradual increase? Uh, I just speak No, I, I actually just think that that, that has become uh, the, the standard. It's the floor. So it, it, it seems like a, a lot, and, and, uh, and then I guess in some ways it, it, it is, and in many years it is. I just think that we are now to a point where e-commerce, especially in the alcohol industry, is becoming the norm. Right, so our floor, the industry's floor just keeps going up and up and up. We might have December's that blow up or, you know, uh, November's, but uh, the current trend right now is uh, there's an, a mass movement towards e-commerce. Corey can probably get into this a little bit more when it comes to the big brands themselves, but from a store's perspective, sort of that's what I'm talking about. You know, Corey can probably touch a little bit on what that looks like in terms of the brands. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to kick that off next here. Uh, Corey, we did a lot of brand activations this past year. Uh, can you can you speak on on, on the trends that we've seen for 2021 and, and what you're thinking for 2022? Yeah, I mean, at the supplier level or the brand level, um, again, you know, they were looking for an outlet, uh, you know, post COVID, just like the retailers were or just like consumers were in terms of e-commerce. And so we saw a lot of, um, you know, their marketing dollars and their questions coming uh, by way of uh, digital activation campaigns. And so that's sustained, obviously, through 2020. But 
as we've moved into 2021 and then now 2022, we'll continue to see those relationships grow. I think we activated over 100 digital campaigns for brands and suppliers last year within our platform. Um, so, you know, banners, pop-ups, uh, push notifications, any number of tactics when we build these custom campaigns out are uh, accessible to all of our users uh, at an end level. And it highlights the brands and those particular products within those brands that they're wanting to push, whether that's seasonality, whether that's emerging brands, whether that's their core brands. Um, you know, we kind of customize those, those offerings or those packages to their needs. But I think, again, going back to what I said before, is because we flattened the curve and really started to see sustained success month over month over month uh, in 2021, I've already received an influx of uh, interest um, from large supplier groups um, about what else they can get involved in or how else they can better leverage our marketing capabilities in 2022. Um, you know, they have models that have been built out that show them the growth and the trends moving in an upward direction over the course of 2021. So now it's really a matter of doubling down on budgets and efforts and what else can we, can, can we squeeze out of this? Um, you know, what other opportunities are there uh, to partner or to drive traffic or to, um, you know, educate the end consumer uh, towards adoption of e-commerce as a viable, you know, shopping uh, model. So I think that's what I've seen already early in 2022 is, is brands really sinking their teeth into what can e-commerce truly become. And what is it yielding to our overall sales numbers? Uh, you know, one very large supplier uh, kind of quoted to us. So they estimate that anywhere between 30 and 40 percent of in-store purchases of beer, wine and spirits um, actually started somewhere online, whether that be just a quick inventory search, whether that be processing an order, coming and picking it up curbside any number of, uh, of methods uh, in terms of shopping behavior, but starting that process online. And I think many of us could relate to that in other areas, whether it be retail, whether it be food, uh, we've already started to kind of uh, behave in that way. And so alcohol, uh, e-commerce is following suit. So those numbers are huge. I mean, 30 to 40% of in-store purchases generating from a, a online first destination uh, how do we tap into that and how do we leverage that and how do we maximize that, uh, you know, that, that shopping flow? So I think it's going to be interesting working with, uh, you know, folks at the supplier level, the distributor level this year, again, really leaning into what are the capabilities of e-commerce uh, for beer, wine and spirits. And then as a technology partner, you know, how do we develop those offerings? How do we uh, maximize those campaign activations? Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun, but I'm already starting to see the conversation uh, kick off early in 2022. That's awesome. And, you know, you, you mentioned how uh, some of our brands and suppliers are already are reaching out about, about what's, what are some other areas they can get involved in. Um, you know, we have here uh, in our notes here, you know, data driven. And I think that that's something that's uh, definitely on the shelf. Uh, could you kind of expand on, on what offerings we have as it relates to data? Yeah, so towards the tail end of 2021, um, our data dashboard or, or back-end portal really became an emphasis of what we were doing from a development standpoint at Bottle Caps. Uh, so we created the brand Bottle Sense, and uh, you know we label that uh, with a tagline of making sense of your data. Um, the data collection process is great, and having this stored information on both consumers to shopping behaviors to product sales to inventory counts, you name it, but then displaying it in a way that is digestible, uh, not only for the, the data engineers that are out there, uh, but also for your marketing experts. So they can take data, understand it very quickly, and then make actionable decisions based on that data. So Bottle Sense uh, is a near live data dashboard that we provide to our supplier uh, partners. Uh, at a campaign level, as well as an always on just kind of data learning level. And it's a data as a service. So a subscription model that, um, you know, our suppliers are gaining access to. So they can log in, 
uh, at any given point in time. The data refreshes every 24 hours. So it's the newest, most updated data that they're going to get in the industry. But then they can do all kinds of different filters and searches and views, uh, really allowing them to get as granular as they may want to, uh, which is also a, a real selling point and obviously a core competency of what Bottle Caps does. We do everything uh, at a store level. So you could narrow views from you know, a nationwide scope down to an individual state, down to an individual state, and then even further. Well, hey, let me, let me, just, let me just pick up real quick on that Lupe. So bottle sense, so Corey kind of touched on bottle sense sort of at the, at the highest level. Uh, but one of the interesting things about bottle sense too, is that our, 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 our stores have access to that too. We have a, a plan called bottle service, which, uh, you know, a, a allows, uh, customers on that plan to get real time data about a lot of the stuff he just talked about. Um, but it, we, we've we've seen that stores can take that and, and take an action on these. Uh, one of the things uh, that he mentioned was trending products. I mean, we, we can and you know how, how well products are moving in real time. Well, if a store can see that, then they can take an action on that, right? So, here are my top selling items. I want to put them front and center. Maybe send a push notification about it. You know, something like that. So these are items that we know customers won't want to purchase. Another thing that 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 bottle sense um, allows customers to see, or when I say customers, our, our stores to see, is what products are actually being left in in their in customers' carts. And so, if you it, well, you can combine that data with a push notification. So you could basically say, look, okay, we've got Tito's is left in thirty seven customers' carts right now why don't I just set up a flash sale real quick and see if I can get those customers to go ahead and take that next step of pulling the trigger on that Tito's that's sitting in their shopping carts. So then boom, send out a push, push notification, five bucks off Tito's uh, 1.75 for today only. And then you can start seeing some of the, some of these uh, uh, converted into actual orders and sales. Um, so that's been really, really interesting, Lupe. Yeah, so I mean, I think at the end of the day, the point from a bottle sense perspective and what it offers the brands is they have the ability to access this data on a near live uh, view. So every 24 hours, the data refreshes uh, completely for their particular portfolios. So they can look at their products and how they're performing on a national level. They can look at it all the way down to a state level or even get as narrowed down and granular as individual chains or individual store locations and really see how this thing's you know, per performing. So for us, that allows them uh, at a brand level to get creative with their actual campaign activations. If they wanna go straight local and, and really you know, hone in on the region or the particular area or activate based on certain events uh, that are happening in the areas, they can do so and the data will drive them in that direction. Or if they really wanna go a wide swab and you know, cast the, the widest net, and then we have national campaign activations that we do pretty regularly. So bottle sense hand in hand tied to kind of our programmatic activations really gives uh, the supplier brands resources to be able to make quick decisions and smart decisions, you know, based on what the data tells them. So with that, let, let's go ahead and start segueing into uh, what we got coming up this, this year for 2022. Uh, Corey, Corey and I have been working on some awesome partnerships uh, that we have uh, actually recently announced on social. So if you follow us there, uh, you would definitely know. But that is the Mom Game uh, podcast. Uh, two uh, sports broadcast interviewers uh, that have just gone to town and, and created their themselves a, a podcast uh, with a nod to moms and of course sports, uh, all while while in, you know partaking in a, in a, in a couple of. Uh, glasses of wine, uh, and just having fun. Uh, so that, uh, Corey, can you kind of speak on, on how that, uh, partnership kind of came about and, and what we're looking uh, forward to, uh, for this year? Yeah, it was kind of a fortuitous kind of, uh, unveiling in terms of how the relationship kicked off and then how we were able to get to a place where we've actually launched the first episode sponsored by Baldo Rover, which is obviously our online marketplace for beer, wine, and spirits. But um, 
It's an interesting story. They reached out to us just a uh, generic kind of inbound lead or inbound form submission, but they thought obviously for what they do and their audience in particular, that having an alcohol delivery platform uh, attached to their podcast and obviously sponsoring um, these episodes made the most sense, right? Uh, again, they're all about talking sports, talking mom things over a glass of wine. So, you know, what better company to, to help support that than, than an alcohol delivery company? So that's where Bottle Rover came into the picture. Uh, I actually had dealings with uh, Emily Jones, so one of the two partners uh, on the podcast itself uh, for my days back at Texas Tech. Um, she was a sports analyst and, and kind of newscaster there in, in Lubbock while I was playing baseball. Uh, so I had a chance to interact with her. I uh, had a couple interviews that were through her. And I followed her career here with the Texas Rangers uh, and in DFW covering tons of sports. So, um, you know, we kind of joked about it, laughed about it in our first meeting. But when it was all said and done, we're, we're really trying to grow our footprint uh, for Bottle Rover here in the DFW market. And uh, they have a large following and audience that seems to be right on par with some of our target audience as well. For us, uh, working moms, stay-at-home moms, you know, people that make uh, a lot of the purchasing decisions in the home have been a target audience for Bottle Rover anyway. And so for us to lean into a partnership where that's exactly who they're speaking to daily, um, you know, it was just natural. And so we're really excited. Uh, the first episode went live last week and to hear our mention and, you know, kind of the, uh, the introduction as a partner or sponsor uh, was pretty exciting and, and we're excited to see where it goes. Uh, we're booked out for the entire quarter, Q1, so through March. And uh, we'll be getting with them on some creative ways to, to interact with their audience and, and bring them value. So very excited. Absolutely. And for those wondering, I'll, I'll drop the link in the description. Uh, feel free to check out their episodes. Uh, they're, they're full of just stats, excitement, and sp uh, special guests. And of course, wonderful sponsors like us. Uh, with that said, um, we also have another partnership uh, that, that we've uh, cultivated with uh, Putts for Mutts. It is a, um, a charity uh, organization that, uh, you know, holds golf events uh, in, you know, uh, direct support uh, for animal, shelter, animal shelters local and nationwide. So we're very excited about that. We'll actually have an event uh, in April. Uh, more, on, more details on that later. Uh, again, I'll drop that into the description. Uh, but we're very excited for this because, as you guys know, we, we do host a bit of our own um, – nod to, to our furry friends, which is BR Buds. Uh, there is actually a, a BR Buds tabs on our alcohol marketplace, uh, Bottle Rover. So feel free to check that out. Um, we're always, we're always in, in love with our pets here. So um, very excited for Putts for Mutts. Um, well, that, that seems to check all the boxes, guys. Uh, I just wanted to, to really uh, have an introductory conversation around 2022, what we've done, what we've seen in, in, in the past year. Any, any closing remarks for you guys? Any teasers or anything uh, for the folks listening uh, as far as 2022 goes? Uh, yeah, so one of the things that I, I have noticed a lot in, in the new year is, uh, and I think that a lot of these liquor stores are sort of picking up on, um, you know, cues and from restaurants that have been doing this a long time and that have a service industry liquor stores are going to have to sort of find themselves in that position as well. They're, they're kind of in the service industry as well, right? Like the experience of walking into a liquor store, you, you don't necessarily have a wait staff, but you certainly have a staff that they can help guide you through the, the process. If you place orders online, how that process converts, how that process goes from placing the button to getting your alcohol, uh, that's you know, critically important. And, and I think that, you know, liquor stores are starting to realize how important their staff is much like a restaurant. And in a similar way that restaurants, uh, the staff works on tips and that increases the quality of the service, right? The, the staff is incentivized to do a good job. Well, I'm starting to see that a little bit now. And I, as, towards the tail end of 2021 and moving into 2022 is, is like, you know, a tip sharing model where uh, you know, stores are getting their entire staff trained up to know how the app or website works. Um, and then sort of what the process looks like from when a customer orders to when they pick up their, their booze, whether it's in store or, or delivery. That process needs to be seamless. 
And the more seamless it is, the better the tips. And then a lot of these stores are just sharing the tips equally among their entire staff. And what's interesting about that is, is that just like at a restaurant, you know, these, the staff is, is incentivized to do a good job to, to, to provide quality service. And in all the interviews we did, I did exit interviews with our top accounts from 2021 and almost to a person, the quality of service was the, the biggest indicator of whether a customer is going to come back and reorder again. Uh, and so looking at the liquor industry, the liquor store is almost more like a restaurant and more like a service industry. I think that may be, and I could be completely off base, but I do think that is sort of a trend that, that we might see moving forward. I, Sorry I, to ramble a bit there, but uh, yeah, I see where, I see where you're, where you're, that's a trend I'm seeing. I'm picking up what you're putting down for sure uh, is, you know, instead of it being where, Hey, just come get your products transaction done. It's more of like, hey, I like to shop at Lucky Lucky's Liquor because uh, they always leave a note in there or like, you know, they, they have a little bit of an extra, uh, uh, I don't know, pizzazz or, or, you know, sparkle to their Yeah, service. I think that uh, it's it's gone from being more transactional to more experiential. Mm, okay. Um, you know, I think that that's pr probably the number, you know, and the other thing is just adding value. So what, what sets, uh, what would make a customer want to, um, shop in store versus online. And so where is that extra value? And so you'll see a lot of clever strategies. You know, we have customers. One of the things I've also started to see is sort of an, uh, an e-commerce rack or an app rack, which is just items specifically discounted and inside the bottle caps app, which is the, the, the main app for a store. It could be branded to ABC liquor, whatever it is. And it, you know, we'll see stores put five of the best selling products, maybe that they saw from the bottle sense, right? They get their report, they know which products are hot. Mm. And then they create a section in store that is called the app rack. And you can buy any one of these products either in store at full price, or you get a discount if you, if you purchase it through the app. And, um, and so that's another thing that's sort of trending in, in, in that direction as well. Um, but the other thing is, is just the data piece of it, like Corey had mentioned, 40% of, of all online orders end up shopping in store. So $1,000 through, through the app or uh, through a store's app or website is only 60% of what the actual order amount from their customers are, right? If it's, if it's $1,000, then another 40% was the other $400 was customers who went in and ordered in store. And so we're all just kind of learning how this all works and finding our footing. I think 2021, uh, we might've got out from our skis a little bit. I think the whole industry did 2020 really. And I think 2021 was sort of finding our balance in an entirely new uh, landscape. Hey, put a cherry on top of that. Uh, I, th I think you couldn't close it off better. <laughs> I, I definitely love the bridge between digital and in, and in, and in, in person with that app rack. Uh, Corey, any closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think for us uh, as a technology company, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, we're always aiming to situate ourselves amongst the three tier and to be able to add value from a technology standpoint at all level levels of the three tier. Um, so, you know, I think we've already started to see the relationships uh, at the retailer level, supplier level, distributor level be formed. But now again, back to my point previously that I really feel each group is now understanding e-commerce better than they did a year ago, two years ago, certainly. And so they are now actively looking for other implementations, other activations, other development opportunities to be able to better serve their piece of the three tier. And so bottle caps, um, you know, conveniently is one that can add value at all levels of the three tier. So we can provide tools to the distributor that better serves their B2B customers, that being the retailers or the suppliers who are trying to reach the end consumer and making sure that their brand is getting that share of voice uh, amongst consumers that they're looking for. Uh, and then obviously retailers being kind of our core competency and that being where we build all of our technology around, you know, supporting them on their journey into this e-commerce uh, opportunity. But, 
as a new mechanism to reach the same customers they have or to grow their customer base beyond what comes in the store in terms of foot traffic. So, you know, we keep being, um, you know, nimble and flexible to what requests are coming to us from the industry, but we're also trying to forecast and, and create vision along what's possible uh, so that we can kind of uh, leverage our understandings on the tech side and then learn how to, uh, you know, access and implement within the industry itself. So it all continues to grow. It all continues to speed up. Uh, the conversation is ever uh, going and evolving uh, and bottle caps has been at the center of it for, you know, going on five, six years now. And cheers to that. No, I love it. I, I love how we've uh, even internally for, forced our team to really, you know, think forward and uh, cap, capture and, and even trailblaze. Uh, so very excited for this year, guys. Uh, thank you all for your time. Um, definitely appreciate it. And uh, guys, we're, we're, we're looking to do a lot more of these uh, bottle cast episodes uh, and increase the frequency to, to make sure that we're sharing all, all the great things that our team is doing. Uh, so if this was helpful, of course, uh, share it with some with someone uh, in the industry uh, or just, you know, share it, share it in general. But uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Bottlecast, the official podcast of Bottle Caps. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.